untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game the video. Today we're taking a look at a white weenie deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, an aggressive white creature deck capable of going wide with a bunch of tokens and anthem effects, and one of the new cards from Innistrad, Midnight Hunt at 3 mana is Adeline Resplendent Cathar. She has 4 toughness, vigilance and power equal to the number of creatures we control, and whenever we attack, doesn't even have to involve Adeline. For each opponent we get to make a 1-1 one, one white human creature token that's tapped and attacking that player or a planeswalker they control, so will very quickly help us go wide, while also providing a very large creature with a lot of power. Then we also have two copies of Brutal Cathar, which has overtaken Skyclave Apparition in this slot, as the Cathar lines up a little bit better against the big Tree Folk tokens from Ren and Seven. It's a 2-2 Human Soldier Werewolf that when it enters the battlefield or transforms from the Brute into the Brutal Cathar, we get to exile target creature and opponent controls until this creature leaves the battlefield. So this is a daybound card, meaning that if it's not already day or night, it will turn to daytime as the Cathar enters the battlefield. Then if the active player doesn't cast any spells in their turn, on the following turn it will turn to night time, transforming all daybound permanents into their nightbound sides, and they will also enter the battlefield on the nightbound side. And in this case the Cathar will transform into Moonrage Brute, which is a 3-3 werewolf with first strike and ward, requiring the opponent to pay 3 life to target the Brute. And then if the active player casts two or more spells in their turn, then on the following turn it will switch back to daytime, transforming the Brute back into the Cathar, potentially exiling an extra creature. So just a very powerful card in this deck, as we can pretty easily let it transform to nighttime by maybe activating our creature land for the turn, and then we can also switch it back to daytime pretty easily by casting multiple spells in the same turn, as we have a very low curve. So overall I think the Cathar will take over Skyclave Apparition in this slot. And then we also have the full playset of Entrapped Adversary, probably the most exciting addition from Midnight Hunt for the archetype. A 2 mana 3 1 human scout at Mythic with lifelink, and when the adversary enters the battlefield, we may pay 1 and a white any number of times, and when we pay this cost one or more times, we get to put that many valor counters on the Entrapped Adversary, and creatures we control get plus 1 plus 1 for each valor counter on the adversary. So for just 6 mana total, all our creatures will get a permanent plus 2 plus 2 bonus for as long as the adversary remains in play. So that's a very swingy effect and gives us a great mana sink in an already powerful archetype. And then at 1 mana we also have the full playset of a Champlain of Alms, a 1-1 one, one human cleric with first strike, ward 1, and disturb for 4 mana, in which case we can cast the Chapel Shield Geist out of our graveyard, a 2-1 flying first striker giving each creature we control ward 1. And then we also have two new removal spells with Fateful Absence, a 2 mana instant destroying a creature or planeswalker, and its controller investigates, meaning they get a clue token that they can sacrifice for 2 mana to draw a card. So this card shines in an aggressive deck, where we might not even give the opponent time to sacrifice a clue token to draw a card. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, at 1 mana we still have the full playset of Monk of the Open Hand, a 1-1 one, one saying whenever we cast our second spell each turn, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Monk. We've got two copies of Portable Hole as a cheap removal spell, exiling target non-land permanent. An opponent controls with mana value two or less until the hole leaves the battlefield. It's another great answer to creature tokens, as well as the various class enchantments. Then we've got the full playset of Usher of the Fallen, a 2-1 with Boast for one and a white, meaning that if the Usher attacks, we can pay the Boast cost once to create a 1-1 white human warrior creature token. Then at 2 mana, still got the full playset of Luminarch Aspirant, as one of the best 2 drops in standard, a 1-1 one, one saying at the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature you control. Then we have our full playset of Adversary, 2 copies of Fateful Absence, and the full playset of Clarion Spirit as another key card in the deck, a 2-2 two, two, saying whenever we cast our second spell each turn, create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying, so this also plays very well with our go white theme, with our Adversary pumping the team as well as our Adeline. And then besides Adeline, we've got two copies of Maul of the Skyclaves at 3 mana, an equipment that attaches to a creature right away, giving it plus 2 plus 2 flying and first strike. So also plays very nicely with the life-linking adversary, or with Adeline that can potentially have a lot of power. And then also gives us the equipability later for 4 mana as another mana sink. 
and then the full playset of Elite Spellbinder as a 3-1 flyer. When it enters battlefield, we can look at the opponent's hand and then exile a non-land card from it, and then the opponent can play that card at an increased cost of two generic mana, so great at disrupting the opponent's curve and making those powerful spells like a Seekas Chariot, Goldspan Dragon, Elrond's Epiphany, Renan 7, all those cards more expensive, which is all we need to do when playing an aggressive deck. And then our two copies of Cathar. Mana base consists of 18 snow covered planes, which can enable our four copies of Faceless Haven, another nice creature land that can help us close out the game. Maybe the opponent casts a board wipe, which is quite effective against our deck, but we can still deal those last points of damage with our Haven. So, yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty nice hand. Sequencing is somewhat tricky, we do only have the one planes, so I'm probably gonna play turn to Clarion Spirits, and then it's unlikely that I'm triggering the Monk anytime soon. So hope to pick up another planes and then turn three I can maybe lead with Monk. Opponent also with a snow covered planes, and looks like it's a mirror match. Alright, we did find the planes, so I could go Monk into Chaplain, but I would rather deploy my clarion spirit here and then not particularly interested in trading although it wouldn't be the worst so what are the key cards in the mirror match luminarch aspirin certainly one of them clarion spirits and then getting an intrepid adversary to stick around is also quite important so, yeah, let's go Monk into Chaplain. And then I'm not going to be triggering my Clarion Spirit anytime soon. So I think I'm okay trading it for Usher. And then next turn we can send in Faceless Haven if we don't draw anything. Opponent took it. It's going to be a code spell. Into another code spell. Also an option at one mana, but it can lead to some awkward sequencing as we see here. Alright, opponent's got a 5 4 on defense. Can still attack into it with our Haven at least, as well as the Spirit token. If we had Entrapped Adversary in hand, I would be less tempted to trade away my creature land here, since every bit of mana counts. But we know their opponent is stuck on two lands, so they've got all spells in hand. So it's kind of on us to try and close out the game before those extra cards will uh, come into effect. Opponent jumps. Mall of the Skyclaves would also be an excellent pickup here. Elite Spellbinder. Any of our evasive creatures. Opponent's got Clarion Spirit without a follow up. Could turn into a problem. And makes a 3 3 Clarion Spirits. Alright, there's Mall of the Skyclaves right on time. So, how about we put it on Usher of the Fallen and then we can boast with it as well? So now we've got the perfect board state for a top decked Entrapped Adversary, giving the team plus two plus two. That's definitely the best case scenario. But now with Mall of the Skyclaves, our opponent will need something like Skyclave Apparition to deal with it, which they do. Fair enough. So our opponent's still at 10. And we've got a long way to go. Luminarch's not bad. So I can send in Faceless Haven. And then Aspirants can put the counter on the Spirit token. Hit for two. That seems fine. And then I'm happy if the Haven trades for 
Clarion Spirit or Usher, pretty much. Alright, Clarion Spirit down. So we do have Air Dominance at the moment, thanks to our Spirit Token plus Aspirant. So that's our main path to victory. Could always chump attack with a chaplain just so we can disturb it as a second apparition deals with aspirant, leaving our tutu spirit alive. Brutal Cathars, great too. So we can exile the Usher of the Fallen and then get a pretty aggressive attack in. And even if they get to Usher back, they would still lose all those counters. So I'm wondering if the Chaplain wants to attack. Nah, I think we'll keep the 1-1s one on defense for now. And then I can boast Usher. Opponent forced to make some trades. And we get some more tokens. So they're just very far behind now. Portable Hole can deal with a 3-3 token or Spirit token. Not sure. So yeah, opponent got stuck on three lands. We were able to make use of our Faceless Haven nicely. And Intrepid Adversary would have been quite devastating here too, giving the entire team plus one plus one. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Turn one, probably Monk of the open hand. If the opponent has a one drop, we can Portable Hole plus Chaplain. I'm also not opposed to playing Adversary for two mana, since we can put a Maul of the Skyclaves on it. Alright, this is perfect. Second Monk into Portable Hole, the Sentinel. Opponent red-green. So probably a Magda deck. So there's also something to be said for keeping Portable Hole as an answer to Magda. And then lands means I can go Chaplain plus Adversary. Alright, play with fire deals with one Monk. Alright, let's go Usher plus Chaplain. Hit for three. Next turn we could also boast with Usher if we don't feel like playing Adversary yet. No plays from our opponents. Alright, since we have a backup I guess we'll play the 3-1 lifelink. Can expect something like a Seeker's Charioteer to stabilize them. In which case, small of the Skyclaves will be a great way to deal those last points of damage. It's gonna be a Briar Bridge Tracker instead, which we can still attack into with most of our creatures. And so the question becomes where to put them all the Skyclaves. Kind of liking it on the adversary, if I attack with everyone. Our opponent can't afford to block the usher, they have to trade with a monk. And there's the Asika's chariot. Another play with fire is not enough, but a sentinel can chum block my adversary. So that keeps him alive. So, probably just sending adversary here. Forcing sentinel to chump, and then our opponent needs another answer for the 5 3 flyer. Not sure what the chariot's doing here.
play Chaplain, and then... There's no real need to play another adversary here. Maybe we can go wide enough to still kill them. There's no real sweeper I'm afraid of. Yeah, I guess we'll play it. If we draw land 4, we can just re-equip Maul. If they somehow have an answer for Maul, then... Having more creatures in play could be useful. And there's Ren and 7. Alright, so that makes a... Tree Folk token with Reach. That they can copy with Chariots. But we still have 5 attackers to the opponent's 3 blockers. So don't really have an incentive to block the Chariot since we can close out the game next turn. Even if they have another play with Fire or Sentinel, it still leaves them dead. And our opponent explodes. So yeah, seeing the versatility of adversary sometimes just being a 2-drop, which is still fine, but then in the late game it turns into this powerhouse. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand is pretty threat light, with two removal spells and a maul and just a chaplain to go with it. So I don't love it. I think I'm gonna take a mulligan. This is better. And then probably bottom the chaplain, keeping Usher and Clarion Spirit as our early threats. One piece of interaction with Fateful Absence. And the lead spellbinder can also disrupt the opponent's curve a little bit. Alright, let's uh, attack for two. Also have the option of boasting with the Usher instead of playing Clarion Spirits, but I think I'm okay playing the two drop. So not sure what we're up against yet. Red green. I'm most likely going to play Spellbinder next turn. And then we still have our Fateful Absence to get rid of an opposing creature. Ah, Dragon's Fire deals with Clarion Spirit. And we can have a look. Alright, so red green. Looks like Teamer even for a light blue splash. And cards. I would like to make more expensive include Smashing and Goldspan Dragon. I think in this situation it's going to be the Smashing. As a pretty great answer to my one toughness creatures. And then Goldspan Dragon we can always target with Fateful Absence. Could see Innkeeper to set up Goldspan next turn. They could also decide to run out Ranger class. Alright, Monk's not bad. So, it's an interesting spot because I could attack with Usher, trade for Innkeeper, boast, but then I'm not triggering the Monk and I'm also not keeping up Absence for Goldspan Dragon, which I think I want to do here. So instead, I think the play is going to be attack with Usher, since it's going to end up trading for Innkeeper anyway. And then play another Usher, keep up Absence. And there's a small chance that they take the damage instead of trading. Which works out well. And by trading now we can maybe prevent a little bit of life gain in the future. And yeah, I can't really afford to let the gold span attack uncontested. Now I do want to wait until the beginning of combat, so they cannot use the treasure to make 2 mana and play ranger class. So now we can absence, and then sure they can have 2 mana, but they won't be able to use it at sorcery speed. And then I think I prefer activating Haven over boasting and playing monk. Opponents at 4. So we'll see if we can cross the finish line here. Tracker is fine. 
and a ranger class that are not dead on board. But this will do it. And then I guess monk first is technically the correct sequencing, but just putting a counter on Spellbinder and hit for four. All right, so we got to see the value of Fateful Absence as a nice cheap instant speed removal spell. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. And is this a triple monk opener? It could be. Or double monk plus chaplain. And looks like it's a mirror match. Get in for two. Seeing the Sun Gold Sentry can be nice in the late game. Although they won't have Coven enabled early on. So next turn we get to play Monk into Aspirants. Ooh, Adversary will be an excellent play next turn. Trigger everything. And then... Kind of don't mind pumping the Chaplain or... Make another big monk. And we might see a trade for Sentinel. Right, Legion Angel also a fine one off to have in these decks, giving you a bit more late game power. But yeah, this Intrepid Adversary is going to allow us to attack into these larger creatures anyway. And then counter goes on. I guess we'll start pumping Chaplain. Opponent falls to eight. Let's see if they have an answer for adversary. Not super scared of another Legion Angel. All right, they do have Brutal Cathar. Actually going for the Monk. And makes it a 3-3. Three, three. That's fine. And it looks like there's a follow-up, perhaps. Well, another good top deck. Spirit into Aspirants. Make a token. And then... Probably don't want to put Adversary in harm's way. But I can... Potentially pump Aspirant twice. I guess if I pump Aspirant twice, attack with everyone... Hmm, I guess their opponent could have a Fateful Absence, which is maybe the instant they're keeping up. So let's say they can kill Adversary at instant speed, we have to account for that. So in that case, I want an extra counter on Chaplain. Although that one they cannot kill at least with the Fateful Absence. And then the next counter... Yeah, I don't want to put counter on Aspirant and attack with it. So I'm probably planning for next turn. Or I can just make a bigger Chaplain. And our opponent packs it in. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. A lot of removal here, so if they deal with Clarion Spirits, we're pretty threat light. But we can always boast Usher. So 
I am tempted to just attack and boast and then play Clarion Spirit into Chaplain next turn. So we don't expose Clarion Spirit to an early removal spell from the opponent. Right, it's going to be Champion of the Perished instead, which allows us to play Clarion Spirit into Portable Hole. Get some immediate value. Now one card we'll have to watch out for is Crippling Fear, naming Zombie. So that's where Faceless Haven will come in handy. So I'm not going to commit to Aspirants. Could attack with the Haven, but then instant speed removal will be quite punishing. So I think I just attack with what I have, see what happens, and maybe boast Usher, preparing for a potential crippling fear. And we have enough of a board presence where if they don't have Crippling Fear we should still be able to get there. Right, it's going to be a Meat Hook Massacre for two instead. It's basically the same. So I could Fateful Absence my own creature just to get a token. I don't think that's worth it. Opponent is going to gain a whole bunch of life here, so that was quite a blowout. Quite a bit better than Crippling Fear, in fact. But we can try to rebuild. Spider Queen making two tokens. We can destroy the Planeswalker, too. So how about put counter on Monk? And then Chaplain at Spider Queen, Monk at their face. And I'm hoping they double block Monk, because then Fateful Absence can actually uh, grow the Monk of the open hand still. Alright, if they do this, I could still Fateful Apps and Spider Queen to get my extra counter and trigger Clarion Spirits. I return to the abyss. And hope there's no second sweeper incoming. And then we can think about firing up Faceless Haven. Opponent cracks the clue, draws a card, and Jadar shows up. That's fine. Spellbinder seems pretty great here. Yeah, don't mind if I play that first, or we could play it second main, since it's probably not going to change my attack, but it might change the opponent's blocking decision. And where to put the plus one counter? Yeah, I don't think it matters too much. Maybe put it on Aspirant itself, so I can attack with everyone. Are they dead if I send in Haven? They jump, take 5, 6, not quite, so... Yeah, we'll just attack and play a Spellbinder. And hopefully the Spellbinder can... Disrupt another Sweeper. Yeah, double blood on the snow. So, can make one more expensive, but if our opponent draws a land, we're in trouble. So given that, we probably don't win if our opponent draws land. What's my play? I mean, I don't really care about anything else. Maybe Deadly Dispute, sacking the zombie allows them to draw into another Sweeper. Alright, let's cross our fingers here. 
untap land and we lose. Anything else, we're probably fine. Doesn't appear to be a land. Opponent's doing the math to see if they can survive. They can block with Faceless Haven still. But we also have our own Faceless Haven we can attack with. Might as well send in the zombie, hope we block. But that's not gonna happen. Alright, so we might have gotten away with one here. Animate Haven, counter goes on one of the one-powered creatures, and our opponent packs it in, but yeah, could not have been closer. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Good curve of creatures, functional mana, plus a faceless haven. So can't really complain, even if it's not the most explosive start. Put into red green, maybe a werewolf deck. Never mind, Magda. Clarion Spirit to draw. I think I still want to play Aspirant here. And then. Do I want to trade Aspirant for Magda? Do I want to get in for two? I think I'm just going to pass and not let the opponent get free treasure. It's usually a good idea. Magda's attacking. So I guess I really wanted the treasure. Inscription as a pump spell, fair enough. So probably fine to play Brutal Cathar then. Or do I want to Spellbinder and check out if the coast is clear? Because our opponent could technically already play Goldspan Dragon next turn. And then next turn I can maybe double spell. And yeah, there's Goldspan Dragon, Inscription, Stormseeker, so pretty stacked hand. I think I gotta take the Goldspan. And then probably counter on Aspirants, attack with Aspirants. And then I can block Magda with Spellbinder if they go for counters again. That's fine, the next turn Cathar deals with Magda. And if they want to fight instead, then we can still trade. They could also play the Inscription now, fighting Magda and Aspirants. Which is fine by me. Opponent does go for Stormseeker. So they can make an extra treasure, still cast the inscription. And I think I would rather make them use a pump spell on Magda so we can exile her for good. Yep. They lose their treasure. And Monk into Cathar looks good. And Zasperin will pump itself. Okay. And then next turn we've got another good follow-up with Clarion Spirit into Usher. Trigger Monk, Trigger Spirit. Can eventually get back Chaplain. All right, Chariot was pretty great draw for them too. They can even crew the Chariot, give it haste with a Stormseeker. So not what we wanted to see. Probably gonna force me to double block Chariots. B 
before that gets out of hand. But that will give the Magda back as well. That line's not bad. Probably still gonna wait on it for a turn. And then I want a 4-4 creature on defense to block any incoming attacks. And then try to take over with our flyers. Gold span still pretty far away. And we can pressure Arlen. Alright, opponent's just going for it. So block Stormseeker. Usher can block 3-2. And then I do want to take out Magda. Probably with the Clarion Spirit at this point. And then the token can finish off Arlen. It's not a bad attack. Especially if they have another one-mana play, like play with fire. Okay. Well, can still kill Arlen. Opponent does get to block my 1-1 one -one token here for free. But that line will help us block the two twos. So this would be a good spot for like a uh, Mall of the Skyclaves or Intrepid Adversary. Hopefully not another play with fire. Another chariot instead. That's not much better for me. There's an adversary I asked for. Okay, so now what? If I play adversary, can put one Valor counter on it, so it will be a 4-2. Yeah, it seems like the play here. And then I imagine the spirit has to stay back. And adversary is probably going to be forced to trade. They could just eat a token I get with chariots and then take four. Or five in this case. means they can turn on Lair as a 3-3. Three, three. No attack with chariots. So... Let's say I blocked like so. I'm taking 6 but gaining 4. And then... We get to smash back with Adline and Haven. Trying to figure out if there's a way we have guaranteed lethal on the way back with Faceless Haven. I don't have to block with the Spirit token. I would take 8, gain 4. And then next turn I have 1, 2, 3, 4 creatures attacking. Adline has 4 power, 8, 9, 10 exactly. So I think if we take it, we should have lethal next turn. Uh, 
All right, Xanxis. So another very close game against Red Green with some nice back and forth. So overall, I've been quite impressed by this mono white aggro deck, and the additions from Midnight Hunt make it even better than before. There's definitely a few flex slots, like the Chaplain at one mana could still be replaced with a few copies of Paladin class, although the Intrepid Adversary has kind of overtaken the role of Paladin class as the Anthem effect in our deck. So there's still a few moving pieces potentially. Of course, Skyclave Apparition is still a good card, even if it has gotten a little bit worse with the recent addition of cards like Renan 7. So certainly a few cards to play around with, especially at 3 mana, there's so many options nowadays. But uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.